Hey guys, today let's play a game of Stanley Parable, the Ultra Deluxe Edition, which just got released this year. This is an expanded version of Stanley Parable, which originally came out in 2013, and I have played this game before. I did a video on it way back in 2015. Um, so it's been a while since I played this game, but I remember it being a very clever game. And uh, this edition is supposed to add a lot of new content. So I'm really excited to play this. And uh, interesting on this title screen even. <laughs> you can see, uh, wow, it's like an Inception type of thing going on here. Um, yeah, so the game engine has been remade in Unity. So it's actually been ported to consoles and stuff. Uh, the original game was based on the Source engine for Half-Life 2. So... It's interesting. Let's uh, begin. It's been a while since I played it. I remember it being a pretty interesting game to play, though. All right. This is the story of a man named Stan. Yeah. Okay. I already know the story. You're just like this boring office worker. You start off in this office, and you. Uh, well, interesting thing about this game is it's not linear, right? Uh, the narrator basically tells you what to do, but you don't have to follow what he ha what he tells you, and. Um, yeah, like you're just you're a basic office worker, but you want to escape the confines of your existence, of course, right? So it's uh yeah one of those type of um you know, mind control type of things. Okay, can I pick up one of these cups or anything? Okay, this is the LGR computer, isn't it? That's the LGR computer. It's based off the Stanley Parable, <laughs> or maybe Stanley Parable is based off of his. I don't I don't know. Can I pick, pick things up? Maybe I can't. Let me crouch. Maybe I can't. Okay. Alright. Um, yes, so the goal is to uh, just break out of your little measly worker bee existence here. We're doing a try open doors. Nope. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Look at these Stanley old computers. To go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, look at those old floppy disk drives. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace. It's like late of his 80s, early 90s type of computers right here. Hmm. It's important to do a lot of exploring in this game. I think there's a lot of secrets in this game. All right. Oh, whiteness. Bright light. Are we living in a simulation? Look at this old school rotary telephone, dude. Be my Valentine. Oh, everything turns off. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. Nor did it advance the story in any way. You can't jump. I like I hate Mondays. Classic office space line. Can't open any doors. Open it. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Let's see, should I listen to the narrator or not? Okay, let's listen to the narrator for now. <coughs> You could choose not to listen to him, but I think that's a different playthrough. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. This is satire. The big offices. Company boardroom meetings. How to solve a dispute. Using slides. Hey, that's from J-Pod, isn't it? <laughs> Remember this screen from J-Pod. Ooh, broom closet. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. 
to go downstairs. I don't have to go upstairs. Hmm. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, Heck. he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. What the heck? simply repeating. No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! He yelled. This is all a dream. It's the same room that's oh, repeated. What a relief Stanley felt to have the finally heck? found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Whoa. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It Whoa, was so heck? much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. Man. That this was a dream. Keeps repeating. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. Oh, it's a dream. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up. He thought to himself, I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. Hmm. Oh, what the heck? I'm still stuck here. I'm still stuck here. What the heck? Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. Why am I, I have still a in boss. the same I place? Have an office. Again. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. 
She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Hmm, interesting, it got reloaded. Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. So I guess that was a uh, one ending. decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply Okay, that was one ending. Let's try a different one. Interesting. Okay, let's try this this when door Stanley this time. came to a set of two open doors. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. <clears throat> but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Interesting. Or we can keep going forward. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. What is this? Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you... Looks like an Amazon warehouse. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for this is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stan. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Can I? Pick it up? Hmm. Back. Where, where, where am I actually? Hey, Stanley, is that you? Hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. What the heck? <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Sorry, but you're in my story now. What the heck? Okay, fine. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Mm hmm. What the heck? I die? Hey, isn't this my apartment? <laughs> Let's 
going on here? Why is this blocked by a sofa and I can't even jump? Fine. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Watch TV, okay? And so he began to fantasize about his own job. Disappeared. First he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. <coughs> The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through Whoa. this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. It was such a wonderful fantasy, and so in his head, he relived it again, and then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope the that it would never this game's end, narration. that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. Mm. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. Okay. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here. Watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. Die? And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> so I died. Okay. Well, that was another interesting ending. Alright, let's try one more. Let's go, go, and go back up to the boss level. <coughs> go to the boss's office. I mean, oh, new content. Interesting. I've not seen this before. Oh, new content? Let's try this. What does that mean? New content. Hmm. New content. Interesting. Very Half Life 2. <laughs> Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. 
As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. Well, this game is very self-aware. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... Uh, oh, there we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. This game is so, uh, so self-aware. <laughs> I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe mostly tedious. It's as if them. Um, oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. The jump circle. All right. All right. Let's see. It's the jump circle. Oh, I can jump. I can only jump within the circle. Okay. Okay, only jump within the circle. No, I don't really want to do that. Is... is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Goodness. Another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when <laughs> greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended and I, I intend to fling these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. <sighs> it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley Parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? Okay. Is that it? Oh. Oh no, it's a little bit different. Interesting. It's a little bit different this time. Hmm. Okay, it's it's definitely uh it's different. Huh. Things are different around here. <coughs> it's not the office anymore. Stanley! Come over here, in the vent. I want to show you something. Okay. Hmm. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. 
take a look. Oh. I call it the memory zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? Back then, video First games edition. had integrity. First back edition. Then, it all meant something. Audience or waste. Hmm. Twenty thirteen. That was a good year. I missed twenty thirteen. Back when I lived in San Francisco. Had a lot of friends back then. That was good times. I used to go to different clubs, meet a lot of people back then. That was a twenty thirteen was a good good time. Like a museum. Go outside, don't play for five years. It's impossible to get this achievement. Nominee. Down to Earth. Huh. Oh, that look, that's the playthrough I did. of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism, 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. Uh, Destructoid. James <laughs> Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It's a Skyrim. It was Skyrim. It was Persona 3. It was all of them. And now, it's nothing. Skyrim no Persona 3. <laughs> it isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. Okay, interesting. Some rooms. Is that the physical release? I think I did get a physical release at one point. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. 9 out of 10. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone. To spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. I can't jump, so how am I supposed to get there? Oh, here. Oh, these were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? Oh no. God, no! Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, Steam, the online video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's been collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Steam reviews. Oh no, not recommended. Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Funny! I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. Hmm. 
Not recommended. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley? I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. But I always work. To be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did. But maybe it wasn't. Dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. Okay. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Bank. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. And here it is. Go ahead and... Oh, you're back, you see. You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary... <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your feet. <laughs> okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes? It's not unendurable, but... Stanley! Stanley! Stanley, please don't push the button oh, again! Hours. It's been 12 hours! You've just been frozen there. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer, and my God, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely gone. I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times. And there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just you and the button. And if you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here. And more than anything else, I don't know how to stop you from pressing the button again. I can't control anything in this room, Stanley. I can't touch it. And I have to believe, I have to know that sooner or later, no matter how much I plead with you, you're going to press the button. Oh, Stanley, look back. Look back. Oh, my goodness. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I, I think it's been a week. Oh, two weeks. I've been sitting here all that time. Just sitting here. Not a single person to speak. Hmm. What happened? Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. Days, months, I lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past. And when that feeling had begun to subside, what took its place is what I could only describe as the collapse of every moment I have ever experienced my entire life. All of them collapsed down into a single instant. In that instant, I could see myself clearly, calmly. <laughs> What happened now? Is he still alive or is he dead? Oh. Clock is gone. What's going on? 
they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down review and make all of their pitiful demands. But then he's talking too much, they said. First, he didn't entertain us. Now he won't shut up. It's the inconsistency. It's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world. As though there were no consequences for a lack of cohesion in one's assessment of others. But of course, absolutely anyone can leave a review. So here's what we get. We get these demands that seek everything and are accountable to... Hmm. Okay. What's going on? The end is never 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 the end the hell never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end Okay, I don't know what's going on. How do I get out of here? I'm stuck here. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Oh. What is this? Part of this came down? Oh. Now there's sunlight. Okay. Whoa. Now things have grown here. Interesting. No, things are back. What the heck? <laughs> what happened to those plants? They're gone again. Whoa. I'm finally free. Not working. Yeah, it's not working anymore. All right. Well, I'm free, I guess. Where is this place? Okay, that was the new content, I guess. <laughs> I guess that was the new content. Okay, cool. Interesting. Interesting, that was the new content, I guess. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. And now, new, new content. Interesting. Now there's new, new content. I wonder where that is. Oh, good. You noticed my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. Even more new content. Interesting. Okay, it's different. So every time you play this game, it gets a little bit different. That's very interesting. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark. And any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget <laughs> this ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. Hmm. The sequel. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience, built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. 
this is what fans have truly been asking for. Calling it the Scanny Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. Now to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. Interesting. A whole new office. Red is the new orange. Uh, updated ray trace, more of the same. New content, okay. The button that says name the player jumps a infinite hole. The heck? Merch? <laughs> Wonder if there actually is merch. No screenshots, okay. Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Sunday and Happy 12th Birthday. Which would you go with? Uh, you know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Happy oh, 12th okay. birthday, step niece, it is. Okay. Or oh, actually, maybe I should have gone with. No. No, I've made my decision when. You know what, Stanley? I actually think the jump circle was a pretty good idea. I'd like to hang on to that for the sequel. Okay, let's go to the end of the jumps. It just works. I can't believe it's that simple. Collectibles. Huh. There really is a lot of new content here. Get it here, what's this? Free achievement, pull the lever, which we receive your new achievement. Now here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes, you see, you'll come to this lever. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the scene to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. Okay, so it doesn't actually give you an achievement. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Collectibles. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable butt. It's like a fallout bobblehead.
Hmm. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. Infinite hole. idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is in fact a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite fall. You can fall until the end of time if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions if I do say so. Hmm. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top and we can continue onward. Hmm. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. I wonder how long this goes down for. Okay, Stanley. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite <laughs> nature of the hole. Is it a very, very deep hole? Be certain it is. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. From one perspective, the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Okay, well, good for you. You found the bottom of the hole. You found me outstanding. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. <laughs> Look, I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. <sighs> The thing's got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. <laughs> Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the whole mostly infinite? If that works for you, then go ahead and press the teleport button to walk up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. Mostly infinite hole. <laughs> okay. What are their um, ideas? Is there? Easy achievement. Tried that. Jump circle. Tried that. Try the collectibles. What else is there? Exit. Okay, let's just go exit. Oh goodness, I'm Stanley, this is fairly awkward. I hate to do this, but before you leave, you really should go to the bucket exhibit. Hmm. You see, there's a surprise I was going to spring on you later, and it involves the bucket. And I really do hate to break the illusion, but it's important that you go see the bucket, okay? All right, I'll get out of your hair now. What the heck? Bucket. <clears throat> hmm. For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. 
So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. <laughs> right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will okay. say your name, whatever name that is. Here. Let's have you role play as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. I want you to imagine your Jim. Whoa, 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 hold on. I wasn't finished setting up the backstory. If you don't properly role play as Jim, then you'll never understand the impact of this button. Oh Otherwise, God. it's just a stupid button that says somebody else's name. Okay, Jim. we're doing it again. Jim. And this time, let me finish first. <clears throat> now, allow yourself to become Jim. But, Jim. All right, fine, whatever. It's just a meaningless button that says Jim. Are you happy now? Get out of here. I'm done with this button. Why don't you go humiliate me in front of a different feature that I worked very hard on? Jim. See, if you'd only played along, Jim. that would have been Jim. your Jim. name, the button Jim. says. Jim. But no. Jim. Instead, Jim. oh, I can't even think about it. I'm taking the gym button away. <laughs> oh, man. He got pissed because I pressed it too much. Alright. Gym button. Maybe I'll only let people named Jim play the Stanley Parable too. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it will go at the end of the... Um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. Good, okay. Settings world champion, nope. <clears throat> Epilogue. You heard Jim in the game. Exclusive, the button that says Jim. <laughs> That's Jim. It changed. Oh yeah, the bucket. Okay, this is why he wanted me to try the reassurance bucket. Okay. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical, that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I'm happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, any time you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold onto the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. <laughs> Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. Okay. Hmm. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. Now can I leave?
So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Okay. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes, yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go, version 2. What the heck? <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course. With respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? I suppose it could. But it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Okay, it's like a game within a game now. Stanley Parable 2, let's do it. Game within a game. Alright, let's do it. Oh. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley separate. decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Bucket. Stanley picked up the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Cool. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Here, the boss's office right here. Yeah, bobblehead. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these, only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of habit, Stanley. God knows I tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. Okay, interesting. I found, found a figurine. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding Good. light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him, always. The bucket room. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845.
but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Oh, another collectible. Another miniature Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs? Oh, what about Stanleries? Yes, I think I like that. Another Stanlerine under your belt. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him... He's talking about the bucket. Reassuring oh that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be alright. The oh. bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Oh my god. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind control facility. The lights rose on an enormous room yep. packed with television this screens. The, uh, original what horrible secret did this place Original hold? ending in the game. Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. Except I'm playing in the Stanley Parable 2 now. Which is a, a game within the game. Which is kind of funny. monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. <laughs> no! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. <laughs> His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the control. But at the last second, the bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. Stanley gasped in horror. Had this been the bucket's plan all along? To take over the machine and claim the power for itself? How could the bucket have betrayed him like this? Stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Birds. Seals. Silly. Silly birds. The control buttons became active again. Okay. Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another and then it dawned on him. This wasn't a mind control facility at all. It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds all over the world. The mind controls were only a facade to disguise its true intentions. Had the bucket known this all along, Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his hands, the one who had pointed him towards this incredible discovery. 
Stanley and the Bucket never found freedom because they spent the rest of their lives here in this place, living through live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. Of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely the best. And Stanley was happy. Okay. So that's one of the endings? <laughs> Alright. Interesting. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting. Right, this time I'm not going to I'm not going to pick up the bucket this time. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. If, if I pick up the bucket, he talks about it too much, so I'm not going to pick that up. How can we find them? The bobbleheads. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy. So he relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age music. What the heck? You have to listen to new age music? No. Come on. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Although this passageway had the word Escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Hmm. Let's see what's, uh, did I kill myself here? What's going on? Oh, maybe I do. Oh, no. Okay, what's this? As the machine whirred into motion, and Stanley was oh, inched okay. closer and closer to his oh, purpose, it's the the thing that kills that his you. life had been of no consequence whatsoever. <laughs> okay, Stanley see. can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Interesting. Oh, I die, I guess. Oh. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Huh? I didn't die. I didn't die though. Okay. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When okay. every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? The LGR computer. Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Oh, I see. So this is the whole layout of the game. 
go through the office, another office, and then you eventually go to the two doors. Very first concrete, so once it's been the rest of the game, there's an extension. Yep, two doors, the fork in the road, filing cabinets, office computers. Oh look, solitaire. Oh, these are models of the what was on the computers, okay. And then the LGR computer, of course, Stanley's computer. The office. Button sounds. Okay. You see the credits of the game. This is the office. Interesting. boss's office. Ah. Huh. But of course, you being you, you'll probably spend the next hour trying to solve it. Here, I'm just going to make this easy. Where were all of his co-workers? Oh, I don't know. How about... They're throwing a surprise party mm, for him for all his button pushing. Huh. Narrator outtakes. Okay. That's cool. Freedom ending. Your first... That's cool. We got some behind the scenes stuff. Counter on desk. Go up and down frame one. Sending levers. Okay. Trailers. Hmm. Apartment timer. I mean, it originally was built from the Source Engine for Half-Life 2. It was a Half-Life 2 mod, I believe. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let Well, I died that time. Interesting, okay. Well, uh, that's a lot of different endings <laughs> I experienced, but uh, this is a Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, or ra rather the Stanley Parable 2, which is part of the Ultra Deluxe, I think. Um, yeah, this is definitely an expanded version of Stanley Parable. 
There's a lot of extra endings added. Uh, I probably like double at least the original uh, the original game's ending, so definitely worth to pick up because this is almost uh, entirely like sequel to the original game. Very very interesting, like a remixed version. So yeah, uh, definitely worth it. So that's it, guys. Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Thanks for watching. It's a it's very very cool, interesting game that pokes fun is, at itself, and uh, it's like a philosophical type of game almost. So yeah, very interesting, cool.